Good day, everybody. Today, we're talking about the wages and benefits of unions. And it's quite considerably different than those who aren't in a union. Consider these facts. Union wages, which include benefits, are about 28 to 30 percent higher than those who do not belong to a union. It's quite high. There's another statistic that's interesting. States that require employees or workers to join a union have a higher unemployment rate than states that don't require their citizens to join a union in the workplace. That's interesting as well. Considerably, it has changed since 20 and 30 and 40 years ago, when the path to unionization meant that you made more wages and also had a better chance of getting a job. That's now switching. If you do have a union in your state, chances are that you have a higher unemployment rate. And if you're a business that operates in that state, chances are that you're going to have higher wages. By and large, higher wages are not a bad thing. Most of us want higher wages. But here's where that circle ends. Higher wages is just one factor in the cost that you have in producing a product. So if your wages are higher, that means that your product or service that you offer is often going to be higher. That's fine as long as you have customers that want to buy it at the higher price. But if you have competitors who aren't union, then their wages are going to be lower, the cost of their product is going to be lower, and as a result, they're going to underprice your product. That again is fine as long as the product that is made by the union is much better, i.e. the quality of that product is much better than those made without a union. We see today that that's not happening. Certainly nothing against unions, but the product is fairly similar from a union to a non-union. Therefore, if you have to pay more in wages or benefits, then you're going to have a higher cost for a similar product that somebody else can make at a lower cost. We now know that, at least in the United States, that people are cost conscious. They'd rather buy the same product at a cheaper, cheaper cost. That has caused even decimated unions. They charge more for the service that they offer, but the service is the same. Never forget this fact, too, and that is, is the public is willing to pay for that lower cost, that smaller cost, regardless of whether the product is made in the United States by a union or made overseas by some low-wage workers. The public has to be willing to buy it, no matter what's offered. Again, as long as the quality is the same. What does that mean? It means that the wages and the, which include the salary and benefits, of a union worker are too high. One of the reasons that unions have struggled and why union workers continue to struggle as employees. That's another reason that many of the jobs, especially for instance in the automobile sector, are moving to the southern United States, to states like Alabama and Tennessee. It's a tremendous Nissan plant in Tennessee, and in fact, the world headquarters, or at least in the United States, for Nissan are in Tennessee. They're what we call right-to-work states, which means that you can work for a business without being required to join a union. In other states, especially in the northern states, if you want to work for certain companies and certain industries, you're required to join the union. Of course, you get union wages if you can join that union, but what we've seen is many of those plants that used to be in the northern United States and states like Michigan have now moved their plants to southern states like Tennessee that are right-to-work states. It's lower. It's cheaper. Here's something else to consider. If these businesses did not move their manufacturing plants to the southern United States, they would be outbid. They would be under-costed, undercut by manufacturing plants outside the United States in countries like Mexico and Vietnam, which have lower standards of living and lower costs to produce a product. So what these businesses are doing is moving to lower wage states so that they can still offer some employment to employees, to workers. And in fact, we see more workers moving to the southern United States so that they can obtain a job that they used to be able to get in the northern United States. A dramatic change. 
But as we know, change is at the forefront of nearly every employee and ne nearly every industry that we do and that we have here today. Change or failure may not be inevitable, but what is inevitable is failure if you neglect to change. Unions are starting to change and recognize that they need to be comparable in terms of wages and benefits. So there is at least a moratorium on more wages within a union shop. Doesn't necessarily mean it's going down, but they recognize that they need to be competitive. And if we want to be successful over the long term, whether we're a union, whether we're an organization, or whether an employee, we have to be competitive and make sure that we produce and offer as much value for what we give as what we get. Thank you, everybody.